Hi everyone, got another knife review for you. A uh, buddy of mine actually got this about a month ago and uh, he was kind enough to let me borrow this for an afternoon. So thanks to him and we'll just get started. What you're looking at here is the Benchmade 530. This is one of their blue class knives and um, in fact um, the main reason my friend got this was because it is probably one of the lightest, flattest, most comfortable knives to carry that he's seen. Uh, in fact, if you look here, I don't have anything for size comparison, but as you can see, it has a very flat profile. No weird bumps or protrusions or bulges. I mean, it just carries extremely well in terms of uh, shape and in weight. This thing weighs only at 1.88 ounces. Less than 2 ounces, that puts this in the category of knives like the Spyderco Dragonfly and the Sog Flash 1. So incredibly lightweight. Um, you look here you got a pocket clip which is affixed by three torque screws and if you have the Benchmade torque screw set which is like 10 bucks or you can have if you have your own set you can actually remove these torque screws and you can put it on the other side for a left or right handed carry um, lanyard hole here which I think it doesn't need to be put in a lot of pocket knives it's nice but like you mainly gonna have this clip to your pocket um, the handle itself is made out of Noral GTX 830 scales uh, which basically is just like a high tensile plastic which is able to take a lot of stress yet maintain a light weight. The surprising thing is for its weight this has steel liners. This has two 420J stainless steel liners but uh, they're skeletonized. I don't know if I can get an idea but you can see that shiny glint on the inside. That's, those are the liners. Now I'm guessing the liners are extremely thin and if I'm looking inside I can see that they're skeletonized. So the amazing thing is you have the strength of stainless steel liners and yet you have and incredibly lightweight so that's very impressive for this knife that it's able to include those liners a lot of people will leave out the liners just to save on weight I'm surprised that Benchmade was able to keep them and yet maintain that uh, less than two ounce weight the overall length of the knife is 7.42 inches and it's got a 3.25 inch blade and the length closed is 4.17 inches and like all of the Benchmade blue class knives this thing is made in the USA uh, let me see what else can I talk to you about the blade itself is a spear point blade now I'm not actually a fan of spear point blades um, I think of knives as tools for things like opening packages cutting food and stuff like that and a spear point blade if you look here because of the symmetrical shape this lends itself towards piercing um, which is more of like a tactical purpose which I'm not really interested in and uh, if you look here there's this raised center spine and then it kind of tapers down on the other side, on the opposite side where the regular spine would be on a regular knife. And as you can see, if you wanted to, I think you could actually sharpen this if you wanted to, but I would not recommend it for several reasons. First of all, by sharpening this end, you're only going to rely on this center area right here for strength, which is going to deeply weaken the integrity of the knife. In addition to that, um, I would also not recommend it because in a lot of municipalities within the United States, uh, carrying a dagger, especially a concealed dagger, is con considered carrying a concealed weapon, so you could get in a lot of trouble for having that. So I mean, in terms of the design, I think it's a little bit limited, plus the blade is extremely thin, which also helps to account for the lightweight. Uh, for a knife this thin, I would be very hesitant to put this through a lot of use. I wouldn't really not put it through anything where I would have to torque it for side to side movement, but this would be excellent for anything where you would have to slice into something just because it is so thin. Um, the blade itself is made out of 154cm steel, which is a direct upgrade of 440c. Um, basically all they did is lower the carbon content a little bit and added a little bit of, I think, 4% molybdenum. And that adds to the wear resistance, the sane resistance, and the toughness. Uh, so 154cm, excellent steel. And I think you'll find it in a lot of Benchmade knives, so really good. Uh, it's got ambidextrous thumb studs, and this is held in by the axis lock. And let me just, I don't know if I can give you a closer look, but basically, oh, by the way, this entire knife is held in by torque screws, so if you have an entire torque screw set, you can actually take this part knife apart if uh, you know how to put it back together. Uh, basically, what you have is the blade rotating on this pivot, and uh, I wouldn't go so far to say it, it's a hook, but there's a depression on the blade, on the hinge, and basically, you have uh, a steel bar right here that protrudes from both sides, so this is ambidextrous, and basically the steel bar is held in this place by two springs that go like this, and like, let's see if I can use this pen. Basically pretend that this pen is the bar and the spring is like this, and the spring kind of keeps it in place, and you're pressing against it like that. And so you have two really thin springs on either side 
I don't know if I can get the camera, like that little thing right there. And basically that gives the resistance that keeps the bar in place. And as I rotate, the bar will slide forward, like so, and it'll hold it in place. Now this won't rotate until I move the bar out of the way so that it can release that little hinge. Like so. And then I can move. Let's see if I can give you a closer look of a side shot. See how that moves in there. Now, a lot of people like the access lock just because um, it's very ergonomic. I like it as well in terms of uh, ergonomics just because like, without really having to shift my grip, I just pull down on the switch and then the blade will fall into place on its own. Um, so that's really handy. Um, however, I'm a lockback fan just because I think a lockback is a little bit stronger in terms of integrity. Um, these springs look really thin to me. I have never heard of anyone having a Benchmade fail. Uh, and if they did fail, their warranty and their customer service is excellent. You could return it to them and they'll fix it for you. I mean, just on the reputation alone, it's worth it. However, um, I just, I don't know. I feel weird looking at these two springs um, on either side and like the integrity falling on these two little bits of steel wire. Uh, never heard of anyone having a problem with it though, and I've never heard of anyone like having it break on them. So I mean, I, that's just my own issue. Uh, the access lock has been touted by a lot of people. A lot of knife fans love it just because it makes it easy for them to open and close knives. Um, my friend's really good at this thing. I mean, this thing pretty much pops out like an automatic knife when he uses it, uh, and he can like um, close it just as quickly as well. Uh, in terms of the access lock, though, I mean, I don't know. You might like it. You might want to give it a shot. Um, I just like lockbacks, but uh, the implementation of this is great. And plus, um, for a knife, like I was saying, like for a knife with this thin a blade and that's this lightweight, you're not going to be putting this through heavy usage anyway, so you're going to be fine with the access lock. And when I look at this thing, I don't think of this as like a barbecue knife that you use to scrape like crud off a grill. This is an elegant gentleman's knife that uh, would be right at home in a suit. It is lightweight, it is thin, and just the look at this thing is incredible. I had a friend come into my uh, room the other day. She picked this thing off my desk. And she wasn't into knives at all. She's not into like knives or steel or anything like that. And she just picked this up. And for someone who knows nothing about knives, she started like spouting off a lot of the details I mentioned. She was like, "Oh, it's really lightweight. I like how thin it is." And then she really like she was like, "Oh, I really like this like the way the knife locks. I've never seen this before on a knife. It makes it really easy for me to open it." And she just couldn't put it down. She was just playing around with it. For somebody who wasn't really into stuff like that. She was totally fascinated by this knife, and that is a testament to how well this is designed, that you can get someone who isn't into it at all, really, like, you can't put it down. And I have to say, like, ever since I've borrowed this from him, um, yeah, I like to play around with this knife. It's a great, handy, um, everyday carry knife. And to be honest, seriously, a lot of people put too much stock in having a knife for, like, tactical purposes or for uh, self-defense purposes, but for the most part, you're going to be using a knife for everyday kind of things like opening packages, opening mail, cutting through things, maybe slicing an apple and stuff like that. And this will work beautifully for that. And heaven forbid if you ever have to use this for a self-defense purpose, if you look at this blade, it is wickedly sharp. And that tip is perfect for piercing. So um, if you're interested in trying one of the boot class knives and you want something lightweight that's comfortable to carry, which means you're more likely to carry it, you might want to give the 530 a shot. Uh, retails for about hundred to hundred twenty dollars to shop around online and actually for a blue class knife I think this is actually the cheapest blue class knife so you can have bench made made in the USA blue class quality for um, only a hundred bucks um, that's a great deal so you might want to give this a shot thanks for watching guys and have a great day